Like Aziz said, we're creating Kickshot for Android, or attempting to. And this is what we'll talk about today. First, what is Kickshot? Second, the goals we set for ourselves, slash overall goals for the project itself. Um, why did we choose Android? What kind of complications we ran into, what we did to fix those if we could, and then kind of the process we went along with. Go ahead. So first of all, what is Kickshot? It's a board game created here by Aziz Makani. It's supposed to help young athletes, um, or maybe even game board enthusiasts, understand soccer better. Like he said, the throw-in, I don't know this very well because I'm not a soccer player, but I guess it's a little complicated for some people. Um, so yeah, it's three things. It's a soccer board game, it helps people, and because it's a game, of course it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing I wanted to draw here too, as far as I could tell, we played it throughout the semester, the board game itself, um, and it's a fairly accurate representation. I think Aziz did a good job to make soccer into a board game, and this is one of the cards you use. It clearly specifies that it's offensive or defensive, I guess is what that's saying, and it shows that you can roll the dice to advance up eight zones, and that accurately represents what a header is. Um, It'll card even shows you what team that it's um, that it's for too, so. Okay. Um, there's just some more cards. Okay. Yeah, you got the throwing card, goal shots depending on which direction, as well as, you know, if the ability to, like, pass the ball, you know, uh, you know, move the ball down the field, as well as uh, change the possession of the ball as well. One point I wanted to make here. Uh, we know with Solitaire, whenever I play it by myself with actual cards, to cheat because I like to win. One thing you can't do with a game that is programmed, and especially when it's so easy to understand, and you can only do certain things at certain times, it's going to help these young athletes understand soccer really well, especially as an application. Go ahead. So our goals, again, the ultimate goal is to incorporate every aspect, aspect of Aziz's game as an application for Android. Um, but some of the things we've been running into because we're basically new at Android development at the beginning of the semester, um, we had some experience to Java. Java is the language that Android uses to power all its calculations. It's the brain behind the application. Um, that we were familiar to, but we also had to link that to XML files, which deal with the user interface. It makes everything you can see, makes the buttons you can press, uh, sliders, scrolling type things. I think it's also in charge of a lot of the uh uh, I lost the word. Uh, not references. It, it, like it, it, it keeps track of a lot of the things. Uh, the XML files help keep track of a lot of the uh, the resources, the, res the resource files. Like the images we use to make the car or make the soccer ball, stuff like that. Um, another objective we wanted to do, oh, that's not exactly what I meant by various difficulties, I apologize. I meant that the board game itself consists of various difficulties, and in the end, it should be a complete representation of the board game itself, including every difficulty. The next goal we wanted to do is make it so it's easily navigable, so it's an intuitive kind of interface. You don't have to search around or look up um, solutions online to figure out how to use the thing. Um, and eventually, I would like to see peer-to-peer -peer play, like some of the other applications you see out there, like Snapchat or boards with friends or things like that, so you can play over networks. Go ahead. Um, why did we choose Android? Well, one of the main reasons, um, Bruce Bolton had a, two students working on this last semester, so we already started with some Android code for this. Um, second, personally, I have an Android phone. I think it's great. It's open source. It's fun to play with. Um, third, the Integrated development environment for Android is very easy to find. Just, uh, I think it's on the next page, actually. Right. Yeah, that link. Um, Google has all sorts of support for Android developers. It, easy, it even has, I'm not sure how many, but it's got quite a few introductory uh, little um, examples. You can follow along and make a tiny little application that presses a button and shows some just, uh, text. Um, so that was main two reasons. We had some source code already, and it's very easy to download and get started. Uh, go ahead. So add an Android application. There's the game board 
again, you can see it's on an Android device. And right, next slide. some of the complications we ran into, actually, you can go back and go back. This one. That soccer ball in the very middle, and this is very weird to explain, we still don't fully understand this, and the dice up top. Um, we had an emulator set up to represent my phone, my actual physical device, on his desktop, and it ran perfect. The, like if you go at the same time on the same location, working on separate machines. So one thing we had to figure out was how to deal with that. Zach here set up a Google repository for us where we can push changes, pull the new changes, and update the game that way. Um, so that's how we solve that solution. So that introduced another problem, especially for me. I think Zach understands your problem. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. things while we were trying to make this thing work. The XML, the Google repository, dealing with images. Um, that's another thing that caused a very weird problem for us most recently. Uh, we got updated art from Aziz for all the cards and boards and everything like that. Um, and the latest version of the Java stuff working, so the brains, the most updated brains we had, I pulled off all the old images, put on new images, and then changed the links inside the Java and XML files to the new ones, and, every and it broke. <laughs> it, and it, that it got the main thing. menu done, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, that's another thing we <coughs> ran into. We have not found a solution yet. Um, go ahead and see what's on the next slide. No. Uh, I never actually told you that. I, I didn't either, because I don't know how to do it on the ID, and I didn't do run any of the command line actually, checks. So. How about okay. how many? We could take a peek real quick. Oh, just give me an estimate. Okay. 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000? I'd say maybe 150 to 200 each uh, little module, and we had maybe 15 of those. So, so about 10,000 large. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And it could, pro it, it could easily <clears throat> grow from where we're at. So you guys are mostly fighting the interface at this yeah. point. Yeah. And... Someone we talked about there, I didn't actually think of this. If you think of an iOS device, it's almost, the iOS is, the system is basically the same on each thing. And then if you look at a Android device running Jellybean, like my Galaxy Nexus looks a lot different than a Samsung S4 or a HTC device. That's another thing that um, eventually this application will have to deal with, is how to interface properly with each one of those different kind of Operating systems, even when they are the same. Okay, you put your finger on why Android is self employed. Yeah. That's it right there. I guess I guess that's my question is a, is a follow up to that. Basically. A variety of like, uh, versions of Android in terms of yeah. Google approved and customized, yeah. but uh, there's also a variety of hardware <laughs> yeah. in terms of geometry. How does the development environment encapsulate that? Or it doesn't? Or do you say, I am, you know, I'm seven inch specific on this development, you know, this project? I, is there a way that they help you with that? Yes. Well, with the emulator, it actually gives you the specifics of the thing. Like, I know for the different devices, it gave, um, it gave the screen sizes, gave the number of pixels. Um, it also gave, you know, the, I think the rough device that the thing was on. So it would have like the amount of RAM, the amount of free space it had, the, how big the heaps, what heaps were allowed to get. They were adjustable depending on which device you could. Those ones were adjustable depending on which device you could put on. But like, like the, the screen size was, and the number, and I, I don't know about the buttons. I didn't check on any of those at all. But we're all all um, set depending on which.
which 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 version you pick. Okay, so yeah, the the ADT, the Android Developer Tools, and <coughs> the Android Software Development Kit that you, we downloaded with Eclipse, just the bundle. It comes with all that stuff. So it's got you can specify what your target OS. We targeted Jelly Bean 4.2, and then you can specify which uh, version of the OS you want to work on. Oldest. We used I think Honeycomb 2.3 or something like that. And then, like you said, it lets you choose a device you want to emulate, or you can just hook up a physical <coughs> device like I have and play with it on there. So the, the graphics that 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 uh, you guys were working with are they very dynamic? Or are they, are they, uh, <coughs> I didn't think so. But they introduced a lot of goals and they no. kind of put them yeah. But actually, all of the graphics are. There's one animation in this so far. Uh, Oh, yeah. uh, previously, it was animating really, it was growing really slowly, and that's just something that bugs me. It's like you're playing a game, and it takes forever. I, I reduced the speed by I respect that, out, but besides that, all the graphics we, we deal with are just picture changes. Picture just 2D, and we were using a PNG format, so just pictures. And I still, I don't know why that caused so many.